Hi, I'm Steve Shelburne, owner and operator of Shelburne RV here in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee. Well, good morning. Welcome back. It was a uh, it was a nice warm uh, warm Sunday. It was in the 80s. Hard to believe we were wearing stocking caps a week ago, but you know, maybe that's the way it goes. Um, this week's supposed to snap off. Supposed to have a couple days where it's going to be below freezing for several several hours. So had to get busy. The boys had to get a bunch of winterizations done. We got uh, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Scott, and Mr. Jim coming in from Zomer's RV out of Orange City, Iowa. And they're coming down tomorrow. Um, going to do some uh, training with us on the Coleman Basement Airs. So get them up to speed on Coleman Basement Airs. And then that way, you guys in the northern region, region of America will have uh, somebody closer than coming clear to beautiful cleveland tennessee now hey listen if you want to come down here and let me work on it and see cousin gary that's great but uh trying to get, a, get trying to get another place where you know you guys don't have to travel as far so they're going to be in this week um and then we got several little small projects that we're going to be looking at so yeah by the end of the week it may be cold again so enjoyed the heat while it was here so we're gonna get rolling this morning and see what's going on welcome back all right, we've been working on several basement areas in here today. We've got a uh, 6537 that came in, um, bad compressor two. Uh, we did determine that it had a, another leaking uh, uh, reversion valve, which is only the second one I've ever seen do that. So let me show you what's going on. You can see all the oil that has come out of that. And so we've got the new compressor ready to go back in it. Um, you can see kind of where it was leaking how bad it was leaking. So right now we're just trying to get the new compressor put in that. So this 6537-671 actually had a bad had a bad control board. Um, so we've got it all updated and everything was working good on it. Uh, this one had a bad outdoor fan motor. This is a 6536. Uh, had a bad outdoor fan motor and a bad control board. And this one came out of a toter home and it had a bad control board. So lots of bad control boards. Well, obviously we had to do a little finagling on this reversion valve. I mean, I can't, the reversion valves I can't really get from Coleman um, and especially in this setup. So we were able to find a unit that we had up here in the yard that uh, that had a, uh, a, bad, a bad charge, but the uh, reversion valve was good. And we had to get a little creative with the plumbing, but uh, we've got it all plumbed up. Um, and we're pulling the charge on it now. Let me show you what we got going on. So Lewis has got this base mirror just about ready to go. Now you can see there's the uh, one we replaced the uh, reversing valve in. And I had to get a little creative right here just because that reversing valve wasn't made for that. But the customer did want a second compressor put in here, which typically I don't ever do, but he wanted it and that's what we gave him. So here's a reversing valve we took out. And the reason I couldn't get the original reversing valve is obviously coleman is not going to sell me that part one two when they weld braze these together this portion of the valve is actually sitting in a water bath where water's flowing across this so they can braze that so if i undo this and don't wrap this real good i could damage the valve so it's just easier to replumb everything up here that way the heat's up this way and not down on that. Unfortunately, that's just how that one goes. I mean, it's just, you can't buy that valve and you don't want to take a chance to burn the, the, the shifter out of it. So the plunger out of it. So best thing to do is just try to adapt something that you have. Um, and that's just what we had to do. But he's getting ready to run that. And we'll see how it goes. Well, Mr. Lewis has got this uh, 6537 with the bad uh, compressor two all back together and it has run and ready to go. All right, guys, so I'm here with Ryan Zomer, correct? Yep. From Zomer RV, Orange City, Iowa. Hey, that's a long ways from here. I mean, how many hours was that? 15? It was about 15. 15 hours. 15, yep. 
I got guys come all the way all over the country to visit us, guys. And, and you know, the only downfall of Ryan coming and visiting me uh, this week, and he's been here all week doing training with us on Coleman Basement Airs, is that literally last week it was 80 degrees. And so he br he actually brought the cold with him. I mean, it's like, you know, we, we were 28 degrees last night, and it's all your fault because yeah. it was like we 80 degrees. With us. <laughs> it's like 80 degrees before you showed up down here. So, so Ryan owns a family-owned um, RV center in Orange City, Iowa. Uh, he's got a very similar story to me. Um, started off in the garage uh, doing camper rentals and then moved into RV repair. Um, guys, if you're in that area and you need some help, this is the guy to see. Not only that, but he's been here with me all week learning how to work on Coleman Basement Airs. Now, there's not very many people in the country that do Coleman Basement Airs. I am, it seems some days, the only guy that actually does Coleman Basement Airs. But Ryan, his dad, and Mr. Scott have actually spent four days up here and, and you can see on the back of their truck, they actually brought units with them um, so that we could work on. So, so they have got the knowledge now. Um, they, have, they, have, they have seen how it's done, and I feel confident that, uh, that they can do those repairs. Now, hey, if you still want to come to beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee, and see Cousin Gary, hey, that's great. Come on. But I'm just saying, if you, if you need to make the trip, you don't have to come all the way down here. So, Ryan, do you, how do you feel about the Coleman Basement Airs now? Knowledge is power. Knowledge and is that's power. That's exactly what we've gotten here. So I can't say enough good about being here. The trip we made, everything was well worth it and nothing but awesomeness. Well, and this is the knowledge, guys, that's only going to save you guys money. I mean, we're doing this for you. I mean, the Coleman Basement Air, I feel, is a great product. I, I, I believe in it 100%. If it's built right and installed right, it's going to work right. Um, it's a great product. And now we've got another service center. Um, here in the United States that, that is willing and wants to learn how to work on this stuff. And, and to me, that's, that's going to take a load off my, off my back because I'm, I'm dealing with a ton of them. So we're tickled to have you here. Um, Ryan, uh, you've got a website, you've got a phone number, um, zomerrvcamperrentals.com. Yep. So we kind of started that? from camper rentals, but it's, uh, you know, we're kind of more so shifting on just the service side and uh, we do some sales and used units as well. So zomerrv.com. Okay. Check that out. And uh, yeah, we got a campground down there even, uh, only two miles away from our main office. If you need to be present and whatnot, we can set you up, make whatever happen. So there you go. It's just that simple. So, you know, they don't have a cousin, a cousin Gary, but they might have a cousin Scott. You yep. might have to stop by and see yeah. cousin yep. Scott. I'm just saying. Get a cut out of Scott. I'm That's just, it. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so anyways, thanks Ryan. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, uh, we're gonna have a, we're gonna put something on our basement air portion of our Shelburne RV that will have a, that will have information for them. So, so again, hey, we'd love to see you. But if you got to go through Iowa, that's the guy to see. All right, so been a, been a little bit of a crazy week around here. Um, I have really not gotten much video done this week because I've had the uh, the boys in from Zoomer RV doing training with basement airs, and, and then it snapped off cold on us this week. Of course, again, that was Ryan's fault for bringing, the, bringing all the cold weather with him. We were fine until they showed up. Just kidding. It was great to see you guys. Um, but it did snap off on us, and uh, so I had like... I had like 50 winterizations the boys had to get done. So I got some stuff this morning um, that we'll go up here and look at. I've got a equalizer jack that keeps blowing the the uh, Trebetta switch out of it. So we're going to have to see what's going on there. But uh, um, thanks for watching, guys. I had a comment uh, last week from a gentleman that says, hey, we need something more in our content other than basement airs. Well, I've been working on so many basement airs and, you know, I film a lot of other stuff and it seems you guys always want to watch basement airs. So I try to get some little bit different content. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. It's just been, uh, you know, little, some of the little knickknack jobs don't seem to be as interesting as some of the other jobs we do. And sometimes my viewing content's way down. So I'll try to do better, but it's just been... You know, again, we've, we've talked about how it's been so rough over the summer, just really didn't have a lot of work coming in. And, and then, uh, you know, in August, I mean, the doors have blown open. And 
you know, basement areas, I'm not even taking appointments on those until the third week of January right now. And I think our due date for repairs right now is January 1. So, you know, it's just, it, it definitely has changed. It has swung differently um, in the last few months. So, again, I, I have no idea. Thanks for coming in. Let me work on your stuff. If I could have predicted it, I'd be in Vegas right now. I don't know. It's just quite interesting. So, anyways, um, the boys have four generators next week they got to work on. Um, one of them they just got finished up yesterday. I'll try to grab some video of that, and then uh, we'll get rolling. So, here we go. Okay, so the boys are working now on a Newmar uh, Canyon Star, and you can see where the pump assembly is right there. Um, the Trebetta switch, the guys had three Trebetta switches on here, and it keeps um, shorting them out. Let me show you what's going on. So this Trebetta switch back here that operates everything, he's literally had three of those put on. Uh, and, the, and that rascal only lasts about maybe three or four times. It keeps burning keeps burning out now i call eq systems and as soon as i mentioned the part number for that they told me that because this is mounted in the very front of this coach right here water is getting in here and is actually shorting that out and that newmar actually has a kit that goes over to protect to protect that from getting water in there oh so the technician at uh eq systems pretty much told us hey if you'll take you know electric dielectric grease and put on those terminals and then either buy the kit from newmore or you can make your own plastic kit you know you just want to try to keep as much water off that as you can if you if you put a plastic kit on there you'll keep you know 80 percent of the water out of there but the dielectric grease will keep any other water on there so we just elected to build one because the guy's been waiting um, it took us a couple days to get that part and then I've tried for two days to get them EQ systems on the phone um, to try to find out exactly what the problem is because obviously we've had multiple solenoids on there. So what's really going on? I mean, any anybody can put a solenoid on there, but why does it keep burning it up? So evidently this was a big problem with the Bay Stars and the Canyon Star uh, New Mars. And so that's what they've got and that's what we're going to do. And when I get it done, I'll show you what we got going on. This other horse trailer we had come in, it's got this uh, 5,500 uh, diesel Cummins generator. Customer complaint was that it runs hot. Now, uh, where that exhaust pipe right there goes up inside here, there's an exhaust assembly with a flex tube. The flex tube's broke. And so all the exhaust heat is just getting in there and getting it so hot that it's actually shutting this unit down. So. When I get this opened up, we'll take another look at that. Okay, so he put the dielectric grease all over the wires, and then we took this old battery box and just mounted it to there, sealed up around there, put some some nice turn them on tape on there. And so now, you know, even if it does get a little bit of water in there, that, that dielectric grease is gonna protect that. So low cost, simple way to fix this, and we didn't have to wait two weeks on new more. So another little project we've been working on in here is a few weeks ago, and you're not, it's gonna be hard to believe this, but Cousin Gary actually went to school and got Truma certified. Let me show you what's going on. So here he is, we had a surge tank on this, uh, Truma hot water heater that has gone bad and it obviously has cracked the circulation pump. So Gary's been carrying this one around like a baby for the last few minutes. Yeah. And uh, he's got it pulled apart now. I can see what it's cracked on that one. So he's got the new surge tank sitting right there, ready to go back on. And now that he's a trained professional <laughs> on Truma hot water heaters, I get to step away and let him do his job. 4KW generator came into the shop, and uh, what did you find wrong with it? Um, it is overheating, and <clears throat> the fuel hose was dry rotted, and it was leaking oil out of every single place that it possibly can. So. And what did you figure out was the problem with the oil? Um, it was overfilled by about 10 ounces. So it had way too much. Somebody had really gotten crazy with it. Um, 
So we went ahead and uh, made sure that the valve cover was obviously torqued down correctly, and we'll and so and well. did the valve lash because it's got several hours, several hundred hours on it. So while we got it apart, they're gonna go through it. Now this other 4KW that came in. Now this is an EVAP model. The way we know it's an EVAP model is typically they only have one. So this has got two lines, um, and this is the, the EVAP re recirculates it back to the tank. This one came in with a bad carburetor, and also it had a uh, malfunctioning ignition coil that would allow it to run part of the time, not have spark part of the time. So a little bit of a problematic situation because we we're trying to get it run with a new carburetor. And of course, never then would have spark, then wouldn't have spark. So ended up putting a new coil and new carburetor on. This one has been ran on the on the load box, and is ready to go back out. One of the other projects we're working on in the shop is this good old Atwood Mobile Products AFM thirty five one thirty one. Uh, customer brought this in, has tried putting all kinds of parts on here and still can't get it run. Let me show you what we found. So one of the issues that we had, and you can see we're putting the dinosaur electronics board on here because it gives us lights to diag this. Now this good old Chinese only soldered on one side board, we always have problems with and the sail switches in these Dometics we always have problems with. So. As you can see, the green light comes on, indicates that we do have the sail switch, power through the sail switch, and the high temp limit switch. Now, it's going through its clear out procedure to make sure it doesn't have any excessive gas in there. And here in a second, that light's gonna start turning red, uh, setting ignition over to the burner assembly. Uh, once that ignites, that board will stay red, and as you can hear, the burner assembly has fired and run. So the lights kind of are good because they kind of show us, you know, if we're missing the sail switch or missing the high temp limit, uh, what's really going on with that. Now we like the dinosaur boards because that board has a three year warranty. So obviously we had a board issue and then I had a little bit of a wiring situation going on here where this was a little bit loose. And so that was causing that, that signal not to make it all the way through the sail switch. So, um, Ideally, what we'll do now is, Lewis, undo one of the blue wires because we're using the blue wires as a thermostat. You can see we lost our red light, leave it off. Uh, what that does is it allows this furnace now to go into cool down mode because obviously the thermostat has been satisfied and it's not calling for uh, heat anymore. Uh, and so obviously we've lost that signal which tells the board, okay, we're ready to cool down, the temperature's there and so it's satisfied now. So now it's going to go down into cool down mode and then if everything is working correctly on that board uh, here in a few seconds or so then this uh, fan motor will actually shut down and if it does shut down then we know the sequence in that control board is actually correct and it should be uh, correct to go back to the customer. And there it is. So it's gone through its sequence mode. So this one here is a good operation. All right, well, you seen what we had going on this week. I tried to grab as much video as I could. I'll try to get more video doing that. Yeah, you know, some of you guys are over the basement areas, I, I know, but big business for us. So we'll, we'll try to do a little bit more of that next week. Try to get some more of that stuff. Now, look here, look at this guy right here. That's Mr. Wade, he is back. He's been gone for almost 11 months and he is back. So there's Mr. Wade finally made it back to work. And of course you saw what cousin Gary was doing with the Truma hot water heater. I mean, it's just, you know, he's certified. He's certifiable now. Now he didn't get to go through all the suburban. We, we did some suburban training yesterday and he didn't get to go through that because he was already certifiable on that. So, you know, certifiable on what, you know, Truma, Aqua Hot, it don't matter. He's certifiable. Thanks for watching. Loved all the comments. Please like and subscribe, and remember that this video is what? Cousin Gary approved. Cousin Gary approved. Y'all take care.